if I'm being honest, I didn't even know if I wanted to do this video. Uh, especially after reading the newest chapter, which I actually I read a few days ago, but seeing as what it like what it was actually about, it really discouraged me from even making this video because I mean for anybody who knows what happens, which I'm pretty sure is everybody, then you know that there really isn't any I guess there really isn't any point of covering it, but I did say that I will. Um but it is really you know, unfortunate that you know Toriyama and Toyotaro went this route in terms of how they're you know covering the story. But yeah, man, um, Dragon Ball Super Chapter 91 dropped about I think two or three days ago, and I must say I am really disappointed in the direction that they went. For those who don't know, this chapter for the most part follows the movie to a T, with some differences here or there. And if I'm being honest, if you watch the superhero movie, then there really isn't a good reason to read this chapter. I'm genuinely confused. I mean, I don't really know who this chapter is supposed to be for because the way I see it, anyone who's actually reading the manga is most likely caught up with all the canon material. So this chapter, in a sense, is redundant. However, I do have a hypothesis about why the most recent chapters have either been filler or doing what it's doing now and that's rehashing the movie. From what I can gather from the community, it's either that they're using this time to actually plan out what the next arc is going to be about, which should be the Black Frieza arc, or what I probably think it is is that they're probably hesitant about the end of Z because DBS Superhero is about a year away from it, so maybe they don't want to go past it just yet. Who knows? I also heard things about them waiting for a game to release or even the anime coming back, but those are all just speculations as of right now, at least to my knowledge. But with that, let's hop into the chapter. Oh, something I forgot to mention is that seeing as this chapter isn't really going over anything new, I'm not going to give too much attention to what we already saw in the movie, but I will pay more attention to the scenes that weren't there because of obvious reasons. Opening up on the first page, one thing I must give Toyotaro is that these colored pages have to be the highlight of these recent chapters. I mean, just look at this. It's absolutely stunning. Anyways, the first two pages of the chapter sees Piccolo picking a pan from school, and this obviously alludes to what Piccolo was talking about in the movie, which was that Gohan and Videl are pretty careless with Pan and they over rely on him to pick her up. When they arrive at Piccolo's place, they discuss why the prequel arc ended and that was because Goten and Trunks were not focusing in school enough and eventually this led to them getting in trouble due to their grades not being good. And here we also learn that Pan wants to be a hero just like her father and through this scene of Pan saving a frog, Piccolo surmises that Pan is a pretty fearless warrior. Which I don't really know how he jumped to that conclusion but I guess if I couldn't fly I wouldn't have jumped for that thing either so maybe he's on to something. Anyways, due to this revelation, this is where we see Piccolo starting Pan's training. If I'm being honest, I don't mind these first six pages as they expanded on the movie a little bit and I think if they're going in this direction, they should give us more of that rather than following the movie to a T. Now, the next two pages are completely different from anything that we've seen in the movie as we see the Sunset City Police Department investigating the Red Ribbon Army's next move which is trying to recruit Dr. Hito into their ranks and they have our main man Krellin leading the charge. Now from this point on, this is where we start to head into movie rehash territory. The next five pages rehashes the introduction of Megeta and his crony and them picking up Dr. Hito and once they're on their way to the Red Ribbon Army base, this is where we see something that wasn't in the movie and that was Krellin telling them. And what I must say is throughout this entire time that we see Krellin telling them, it's done in a way that would make it believable that Krellin was actually doing these things even during the movie, even though we never saw him. What do I mean by that? Well, throughout these next couple of pages, we see Krellin going toe to toe with Dr. Hito's robot B. And I mean, he's literally fighting for his life here. And through them fighting, Krellin causes the B to collide into the windshield and makes this scene from the movie happen. Now it's a little different from what actually happens but it's a nice way to include Krellin in the story in a way that makes it believable that doesn't interfere with the story that has already been told. Anyways, through Krellin getting his ass handed to him, he actually loses track of him. 
Such a shame, look how far the mighty Krellin has fallen. These 10 pages are probably my favorite due to the comedic aspect, and if you're wondering what else happened besides Krellin losing to this formidable opponent, well it's just Magenta convincing Dr. Hito that our heroes are the bad guys, just like in the movie. When we get back to Piccolo and Pan, 6 months have passed and the events of the movies can be seen playing out, with Piccolo training Pan and not much to say about these next couple of pages because, well... You know. The only thing that we see that's different from the movie is this page right here, where we see Pan making her way back home. After this, the rest of the chapter doesn't have a single unique thing about it, as you can see in the next 8 pages where Piccolo's meditation is interrupted by Videl, asking him to pick up Pan once again, and we see Piccolo berating Gohan about not keeping up with his training and constantly relying on him to get Pan from school. Afterwards, we see Piccolo outpace Gohan in a short sparring match. Moving on, as for the last 5 pages, no surprise, we have Gamma 2 attacking Piccolo and introducing himself, leaving us on a cliffhanger. Now, if you want to know how much of the movie this chapter covered, well, it's a whopping 19 minutes and 19 seconds, meaning that we have, drum roll please, a grand total of 1 hour and 20 minutes left to be adapted, meaning that if we continue at this pace of 20 minutes per one manga chapter, that means we have 5 chapters left to go, which also means we have 5 more months of this, and that means we probably won't see anything new until September. But with that, this marks the end of the video and the end of this chapter. I don't really know if I'm going to keep on covering it and I might start putting my focuses more on other content until things get interesting. But if I do cover it, I'm letting you guys know now that the chapter reviews will be short and sweet as there really isn't any point of dragging these on. But with that, thank you to everyone that watched this video. I hope you have a good day. Peace, peace. Deuce, deuce.